Well, that was an exciting start, wasn't it? Yeah, that was. That was. Oh. I will be very gentle. Good. I'm pleased to hear that. Hey, well, I'm a big fan of the show. I've been watching it. I came to it a bit late. Uh, but really, I've been loving it. I'm really looking forward to the next series. Uh, the, for those who might not have seen it so far, what, how do you explain what you do? It's kind of... Uh, you, you kind of give people a, uh, a makeover, don't you? You kind of help their businesses out. Yeah, yeah, I go into failing businesses, small independent retailers, look at why they're losing money, and try and give them a business plan, work with them for about four weeks. And say, this is what I think your business should be. Work with them, train them, look at the store, look at the market, look at whether there is a market for what they And you, I guess you deliberately look for the show, at least you look for businesses that are doing things which are clearly wrong or, or you know you can improve. Would I be right? Yes. I mean, they're, they're, they're clearly doing it wrong because they're losing money, yeah, yeah. right? But you also think, can I do something with them? And some of them, you know, are just lost causes, in all honesty. Yeah. And some you think... Actually, there's a really great little business here, but they just lost their way completely. But you've got experience. You're not just someone who's... You're not like a TV presenter who's spotted a niche. You actually... You've, you've always been in shopping. You've always been in retail. I've always been in retail. Where did you I've start? What, what did you do? Where were you... What, what shops would we know that you used to work for? At Harrods, Harvey Nichols, Topshop. Wow, so there's, like, there's three of the biggest in the country right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, uh, you know, but it, it... I mean, I started off my first was, you know, my Saturday job in John Lewis. You know, and then I moved my way up and then trained and trained at Harrods, did that for a few years, moved there's a, on. There's a picture of you there, like that, and you've got the... Oh, look! Oh. That was my little Saturday job. You had to have your photo taken. But it's not that different a hairstyle you have now. You've always had that kind of bob going on. <laughs> no, no, now, now it's got more of a style to it and a different... Yeah. You're using yeah. a different L'Oreal altogether. But that was... Uh, <laughs> that was... A, so you've always had it that way. I was way, getting there. I was yeah, getting yeah. there. Was oh, oh! Cool? Is that you? No, is that you? by my mother. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She wasn't. She down wasn't. The edge, the little I, I don't mean this to sound wrong, but she wasn't a professional hairdresser, was she? <laughs> she wasn't, but it was cheap. That's a great it's a lot, My mum used to cut our hair as well, and it always looked great after she'd done it, like after the cut was done. But the minute you washed it or slept on it, bits would stick up for days. <laughs> Uh, so Harvey Nicks, what did you do at Harvey Nicks? When you say you were, you were at these places, you were what? You were you were I designing was their the marketing store? and creative director. So basically, I would work with their brand, like how do you make this store the place where people want to shop? Yeah. So that's everything, every touch point. You know, when we go shopping, well, you all know this, you love a bit of shopping, Jonathan, but when you go shopping, there's so many things that entice you. It's not just about the products, so the environment, the store, the windows, the packaging, the, the music. The smell, the smell. The smell, but I like, yeah. I like, like a nice smelling. That's why they have the perfume departments on the ground floor, isn't it? Because you walk in and you sure go, that smells nice, it smells like ladies, and you walk in. <laughs> That's a new one on me. I like they do. that. Look, That's the two nice, things. You get like a man gets to my age, they, they either want food or to look at ladies. That's what you do. So you go, ah, food hall, perfume. That's it, you're in. You're going to be in the store. That's why they put them on the ground floor, isn't it? That's a good reason. I've never heard of that one well, before. You, see, you should study. You should study more. You should ask me. Uh, OK, here's the thing. I saw, I think it's episode three of the new series, which starts soon, the one with the, the woman with the little family-owned bakery. Oh! Right, and man, what a nightmare she is. I mean, uh, we're going to show you a clip of this, but, uh, but in a way, I would have thought it was probably quite good that you had someone who was so prickly with you, who was so uh, anti your ideas. Um, but why would someone like, why did she put herself up for the show? She wasn't going to listen to you. Did you I, ever get a chance? I genuinely to... thought, she, I think, she thought, I'm going to come in, I'm going to go, right, you need a nice bit of carpet, let's do a bit of paintwork. Yeah. But the whole business was so wrong. The food was so dated. So I went into the product first before I started on anything. And she just would not listen to a word. It was so stressful that I actually had to ring up a friend and give, give me energy, because I actually couldn't go in. Every day I used to go in, I'd think, I can't face this anymore. Everything that I did, she fought again. No, uh, she had pictures up of when the bakery first opened, 36 years ago. <laughs> and she showed years. that the stuff in the display cabinet, they were still baking exactly the same cakes. And she was proud years. of that. And you can see why, in a way, there's a central tradition. But at the same time, the business wasn't working, so, but she wasn't prepared to make any changes. Yeah, but there's a sense of heritage in some businesses, but she was making the stuff that, honestly, just gave you a heart attack the minute yeah. you looked at it. So you had all this audience, all these people that lived locally, all these women in their 30s who didn't want to come in and eat a big iced donut. And I'd say, no, let's look at changing that. She wouldn't change a thing. She wouldn't move on anything. And in the end, she locked herself upstairs and wouldn't come down. Uh, OK, uh, let's talk about the charity side of things, because that was a great uh, venture you went off to. These were charity shops that were losing money. Yeah. And charity shops, you know, they're, they're, they've always been with us. I guess they always will yeah. be. Uh, and there's something wonderful about the idea of taking something. You don't need and giving it away to someone else and then making some money for a charity. It makes everyone feel, feel good. But you addressed that the problems they had, they were, once again, they were quite deep-rooted, weren't they? 
Yeah, but the, nobody had managed the charity shop. The whole charity shop premise was built on volunteers. So when I went to the shops, all these women, I mean, it was just the... I went back in time 50 years. But they were a lovely bunch, weren't they? I mean, oh, they were, they were they, fantastic. These, these women had given their time like they'd given the same amount of time each week, sometimes for like 30 years or something. 35, 40 years, but every day I'd turn up, the bus would stop outside, two women would get off, the two that would come in every single Tuesday for 35 years, get behind the till. The first thing they say is, do you want tea, Vi? She said, I'll have tea. And then they'll <laughs> say, do you want a gypsy cream or do you want a... And she said, no, I'll have a gypsy cream. I don't want ginger nuts today. So this would take about 10, 15 minutes the tea would be made. Yeah. I had to turn it into profit. So I had to wait and say, OK, ladies, could we just... Could we get onto the sales for a minute? Oh, no, hang on a minute, because Vi hasn't had her tea yet. So then she'd have her tea. And then so for them, it was a social thing as well. It was a total social. Yeah. Then they'd get the toys out that had been donated, and some of them had heads fallen off and no arms, and they'd still put a price on. They wouldn't throw them away. Because yeah, yeah. they couldn't bear the fact that, oh, you can't throw them away. The children would love them. So all these toys were sitting there, like yeah. something yeah. out of some horror story on the shelves. <laughs> then they'd say, time up, and they'd go. And the bus would go again. So, so I never got anywhere done. They'd had a gypsy cream, and they'd put a manked-up <laughs> toy on display and gone, oh, yeah. Once I started to say, this is what you can make, they came on board, and it was just brilliant. Well, you it? really changed. And there were so many... Uh, clever ideas. I know you're, you're opening another charity yeah. shop somewhere here in London. Yeah, I'm opening one in Westbourne Grove right. uh, because that one was so successful. We opened another one in Edinburgh and I'm opening one called Mary's Living and Giving Shop. Living and Giving. On Westbourne Grove and Jonathan hand them over, well, babe. I, yeah, hand okay. over the gear. Mary said, when, when we asked Mary to come she said, if you've got anything you can come in and give the store. And I've got, I, I just had to be clear and I've been giving stuff away and I, you know, I try and get my kids to wear somewhere and they pretend they do, but they never, you know, <laughs> what they take it to the charity shop themselves. But I found some trousers, which I think, because I've had a lot of designer clothes over the year and, and as you know, I buy stuff which is wildly inappropriate for a man of my age and build. <laughs> um, and I found some trousers, there's a couple of things here. There's one, one old, look, this is my little bag I bought Look at the bag, look at the bag. There's a T-shirt. I bought this T-shirt, I never even worn this T-shirt. That'll get something, won't it? That's yeah, right. no, the, the interestingly, Jonathan did give to me before, and uh, I mean, it was a while before it sold. These but we used did to be, get money these used to be my lounging trousers. <laughs> yeah, you see, they were comfy. No, these are my lounging trousers. I have to lounge around in, but I don't think I'll fit him anymore. And these, no, look, okay, I bought these. These have never been worn. Jean Paul Gaultier jeans, okay. Design I don't know who was meant to be wearing them. I don't know what I was thinking. Why did I buy them? Have a look at these, Mary. See what you think of these, okay? Uh, what are these, though, Jonathan? I mean, look at it. Look. Oh. Look at those. <laughs> No. Why did I buy them? Why did I no, buy them? Is, I was going to wear them. That is Malcolm McLaren Buffalo Boys. Do you one, remember the Buffalo Boys? One strong boys? breeze, I'd be away, wouldn't I? Look at that. Look at the size of them. Well, well, yeah, that's brilliant. Thanks for those, Jonathan. I'm sure they'll go down a tree. No, we, in the I, shop I, I don't know. I know we didn't get the first. I asked Gary if he had anything he could bring in, and uh, he said, uh, speak to his office, they'd find something for us. And we found the shorts he used to wear when he played for England, because they were tight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You remember them, Gary? <laughs> oh, yes. I think you're naturally in those. <laughs> <laughs> you, used to, you used to like them tight, didn't you? You can have those. Why don't you get them beside them afterwards? Put them in the window. They're going to make some young toddler very happy. <laughs> uh, now, we asked the, the fellas, we sent our, uh, our band out, ladies and gentlemen, to a nearby charity store, oh, and yeah. they've uh, chosen some outfits themselves, and I want you to see just how spectacular they look. Ladies and gentlemen, we've let them loose from the piano for just oh. a few moments. Here they are. Give them a round of applause. It's the four puffs without the piano. Come on out, fellas. Let's see what you want. Mary, tell us what you think of this outfit. <laughs> Purchases. If you if you tuned in, uh, the bloke that wasn't gorillas, ladies and gentlemen. They're on later. <laughs> <laughs> you wish you could get away with those coloured shirts. <laughs> Look, it's been lovely having you on the show. Thank you so much. I'm glad we didn't actually physically fight uh, because that's a trend that I'm not keen to encourage. Um, and I want to say congratulations in advance for your civil partnership. When is that happening? In a week's time. Okay. Wow. Just a week away. <laughs> It's exciting. You nervous? I guess yeah. you're not nervous. You know it. Yeah, it is. Yeah, Lots of tight frocks and high heels, <laughs> and that's all I'll tell you, Jonathan. <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, Mary Porter's shop. Queen of Shops. Thank you. Hey, don't forget this one. <laughs> the baby shorts. Mary Porter, ladies and gentlemen.